Hello, everybody. Here I am in front of my small house. And what is missing? Can anyone tell that's seen my previous videos what's missing? Well, there's a pile on the floor to give it away. It's bananas. I cut down my bananas tree that I had in my front of my house. And there's a reason why. And I'm going to cut down most of my banana trees. You see, you learn as you go. And what I've learned is when you have a small property, at least for me, there are some things that I don't want. And I don't want vines on my property. I've had my experience with passion fruits and with grape vines, and it's just really a complicated thing to take care of because it just gets all over the place. If you have a big space, that's one thing. But when you have a little space and those vines get on things, you don't want them. But today I'm talking about bananas. Bananas take over things so quickly, more than just like anything else, and they're so difficult to get rid of. Any other tree in my yard, if I decide I don't want it there, I could simply move it. If I keep it there, I don't have to worry about it. It's going to do its thing. A banana, you have to baby every second and every walk of the way. And at first, I was so excited. I planted so many banana trees because I was thinking, wow, you get so much fruit from the bananas that come off there. But then when the bananas come off, you got to cut that banana tree down. You got to cut that stalk down and wait for another one to grow. That's the problem. They don't stop growing. Now, uh, I want to produce food that's going to give me the most food with the least amount of work. You know, so there are other people that might have the other thing in mind. But in my experience, and the reason why I'm getting rid of most of my bananas trees is bananas produce uh, a good amount of food, but it takes the most work. There's a tremendous amount of work on bananas. And so I'm also, when I put bananas in, banana trees in, I just try to find the space between trees wherever I could. And it worked in some cases, but in other cases, uh, they were so tall. Uh, even if I have a dwarf variety, not only did they stop the trees from growing that I put them next to because the leaves would hang over, but when I went to go cut those banana stalks out, sometimes they were very close to falling on the tree that they were next to, and I don't want that to happen either. But here's the major issue with bananas. Once you plant them, they keep growing no matter... <laughs> I got rid of one here and it keeps growing. They just keep growing. You got to take out the whole root and that is not an easy thing. So I've gotten rid of one, two, and two in the front, three, four, and five and six and seven. I've already got rid of, rid of seven banana trees. Now, I don't really like bananas in the store as much as I have bananas off my fresh uh, banana trees. So I'm not going to get rid of all of them completely as of yet, but but I'm, I'm, I'm more and more leaning towards that. So I have a banana tree here on the front of my property. It has a stalk of bananas on there right now, and I absolutely love these. But again, look how close it is to my white sapote tree. And I got to stay on this thing and make sure these stalks don't keep growing. And it just takes work. And I'm all for working hard to get good food, but that's a lot of work for a particular amount of food. And uh, this is what's going on on top of the garden here. Who knows what's going on in the root system? Because the bananas' roots get everywhere, and they just they're just getting closer and closer to these trees. So eventually, I might get rid of these. And I also find out if you don't have your uh, bananas on water, they won't fruit as well either. Now I have learned that if you take the don't let the banana stalks get out of control, it definitely is better. So you keep the, them three stalks only, but it takes work to do that because they just keep growing up. Today, I'm going to get rid of this one. It's getting very close to this mango tree. And again, I kept having to cut these stalks so it just didn't shade it out. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's going to become an issue as these trees grow and this grows. And when I do cut the stalks, they will possibly fall on them. There's even one, follow me here, there's even one here, I'm definitely getting rid of this one today. Now, these are great tasting bananas. They're cheap and easy to get. But the more and more I think about it, I don't want them in my yard. I don't want vines or bananas in my yard. I have a small yard. I love things like passion fruit and, and, and homegrown bananas. But they're just a mess and they're a lot of work. And they're not easy to get rid of. And if I ever want them in the future, they're one of the easiest things to put in here. Now, my neighbor has a banana tree right there, so I got to keep an eye on that and make sure that doesn't croach over to this 
this area as well. But I want these trees to get more sunlight. And I'm finding banana is something that's definitely taking out sunlight. So today here, I'm gonna get rid of this here too. I have this banana tree right here that I planted just as something growing up here between my trees, but it's, it's taking room from my, my may tree. It's taking room from this mango tree. It's taking room from that avocado tree. This is going today. Now, I'm coming back here. This is one I might keep. It's an apple banana, and it's all the way in the corner of my property. So uh, it even has some bananas growing on there right now. So this uh, is one I may keep. and may keep the stalks short. We'll see. Uh, but here's the problem, too. This is my canister on my egg fruit. Very close. Very close. So if this gets out of control, it might have to go as well. So there was a time when I first moved in this property, this whole wall was passion fruit when I first moved here. It was all passion fruit. Then I got rid of the passion fruit, then it was bananas. Now, it's so much better. And I'm so glad it's cleaner, it's better. I don't want the bananas or the vines. So I think the rooster agrees with me too. So I have some on this side over here. Here's one I cleaned up. And this is just three, one, two, and three. Uh, I'm going to see how tall these get. Uh, until some of the trees grow in this area, I might keep these here. Eventually, I'm going to get rid of these. They already started. They're, these are the best varieties of bananas that I've searched out. And there was a time when I first got bananas, I didn't know about all this. And I just let them grow. And they grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And there were so many. Uh, stalks and it was like walking through a little forest and it didn't take long for that to happen And here's one more I may keep uh, So this one's looking nice. So I may keep uh, two or three of them uh, For a while, but eventually I'm gonna get rid of them uh, as well I might even get rid of them now, but and then there's two more I got to get rid of I was ready to get rid of this one the other day, but Right on there some bananas grew so I said let, let me let me taste them before I get rid of that one. And here's a great example. This tree right here is completely in the middle of my path. And right now it's one stalk with two small stalks. But if I don't stay on this thing, this thing's going to block my complete path. And it's also limiting space and going to continue to limit space and sunlight for my other trees. And again, I don't know what's going on under the ground, that root system. Uh, how much it's messing with these roots. So uh, I'm encouraged and excited to <laughs> get rid of some banana trees today and, and uh, yeah, and just open things up and get some sunlight here. What's your experience been with bananas? Uh, also hurricanes, even though the leaves are, are, are uh, the wind kind of goes through the leaves, they still blow down during windy, when it's wind. I find. So uh, it's just a mess. Every time I go in somebody's yard, they say, oh, I haven't had time to keep up with them. And they became a mess. And that's been my experience. So it's time for them to go. Okay. I know not every one of you is going to agree with what I did, but I did it and I feel really good about it. So I'm going to show you right here. Uh, it opened up this space. This was a banana tree here. And uh, as you can see, I cut it back. And now I got to keep on that. I didn't, the trees were too big to take the roots out. So I didn't take the roots out, but this is a cac mango tree. This is going to give this whole tree a nice area to grow now. And because it didn't have room in the front to grow because I have my jackfruit here. And then this is probably the biggest tree or one of the biggest trees I cut. This whole area is opened up now to get sunlight to this cac mango on the other side. And also to give more room to this uh, to this Kent mango tree and also to this Jack fruit tree. So it opens up this whole area now. So I'm really glad I did that. And again, there's uh, some big stumps here. I'll have to monitor. I didn't take them out so they don't grow back. Uh, it feels like a whole new yard now. And so I took a banana out here. 
it was a banana tree that I had put in. There's a stump. Uh, between here, I have an uh, Haas avocado, uh, super Haas. I have a mango tree here. And then I have the mamey here. So I'm thinking it'll give all these trees more room, more sunlight, more space. And I don't have to continuously monitor that tree, uh, that, that mango, uh, banana tree. Now I did leave this one in for now. This is uh, apple, Monsanto banana. I left that in now. I have it to three stalks and I'm gonna keep it. I try to keep it small. It is close to this egg fruit, but we'll see how that goes. Now this is a really big tree that I took out. This was one of my favorite bananas. When I first got the yard, it was in the corner over there and it took over everything. And I cut it out, I moved it here and now it was taken over this area. Now all of it has opened up and it's gonna give my lemon meringue tree so much more space. It's also gonna give my Simmons avocado tree much room to grow. And here I have my M4 mango. So I think that one was one of the most important ones I had to get rid of uh, for a lot of this. I made a big compost pile of uh, many of the mango trees here and everything else is coming along good, looking good. Uh, this one I was skeptical I wasn't gonna take out, uh, but I did. It just again, opened up everything. I'm growing over here, I'm in row avocado. So it's, I'm not gonna have to deal with that later. And there's my Relina tree. So I think I did a good thing there. And I cut this one back to two. This was <clears throat> one of the ones I'm gonna keep most likely possibly, uh, but uh, there's some bananas coming off that one and I just cut it back to two, it was about four. So I cut it back to two stalks. And here, this was where uh, my original apple Monsanto banana was that I had moved over there and I opened this up. It's gonna give a lot more room to the jackfruit tree. Okay, so that is what's, what's happening here. And uh, everything else is looking great. Uh, and I, again, you know, we learn as we go and uh, that's what we learn. And I think bananas are a good food, but, and to grow them if you have the room, okay. But if you don't have the room, uh, you know, if you have a small property, bananas and vines are things I would be skeptical of. So when I first moved here, this whole fence was all vines, was all passion fruit, and it took over everything. And then on the other side, I put some, some grapes, took over everything. And uh, so now I feel good about this. Okay, so this is one, the original one I wanted to move. It's way too close to the house. I didn't want to create a ladder for raccoons to go up to the roof. And I, I was originally going to get rid of it, but it started growing some bananas. And they're quite, uh, quite small. It's quite a small tree. So I'll see how those bananas taste. I forgot what kind of tree this is. Uh, but I did cut one stalk off and I left one with the bananas. We'll see how it is. But I'm going to get rid of it because this mamey tree is growing really nice. And if the banana is going to be in the way, it's going to just open things up. So I'm going to wait to get those bananas first. Though. Before I go, I just want to show you what I did in my front yard. I got this big mamey tree here. Beautiful mamey tree. And here I have a white sapote tree. But if you come back and look, the banana is loaded right now. That banana back there. But it is getting close. So I'm leaving that because there's bananas on there and I might just leave it there anyway. And then there's this one that I left for now. It's just one stalk growing up. So I did leave these two in the front. They're more towards the corner and they're not taking out too much sun from the other trees, but I'll see how they do and how tall they grow. Uh, so this is a view from the other side. So this one, I left three, three on there. This is one of them that has bananas right now. And here's the other one that I left. There's three small ones on here as well. Uh, so this uh, space uh, is 
it's, it's not too bad for it. You see, it, it is getting over the mame. It is touching that, so uh, eventually I'll probably take these out also. And that's my conclusion to this. And like I said, uh, you know, this might not be the best choice for some of you. I was really excited about uh, bananas when I uh, first put them in and getting all the best varieties and so on. But if I had to do it again, small yard, no vines, no bananas. Uh, that's uh, just from my experience here. I know some of you might experience something different, but uh, we all learn as we go. All right, here I'm in my neighbor's yard right across the street, and he has a giant banana tree here. And you see there's some bananas hanging up right there. So uh, bananas give a good amount of food when they, when they give food. And he actually has a good spot. He's not so close to trees, so if he cuts to that, it's not going to hurt the other trees. I planted mine not in the best spot. But he did have a big tree over here, and it was kind of in between two, uh, in between two trees. But since he took, he decided to take a tree out because it wasn't fruiting too well instead of the banana. Uh, but this is a great example. I mean, this is uh, a nice banana, but it got out of hand, and it got busy, and uh, this could... Could have been two, three, two or three neat stalks, but because he got busy like we all do, it turned into this. And that's why bananas take a good amount of work. I mean, it's not easy when the stalks are small to just take them out. But the problem is a lot of us get busy and we forget or we get caught up with other things. So, yeah, it's cool. While I'm here, I got to show you this. This is absolutely amazing. It had nothing to do with bananas, but look at this. Bangkok lemon uh, jackfruit tree. Absolutely great. Let's go to the other yard because he has some smaller he has some smaller trees with uh, bananas on them. So let's check it out. Okay, here we are in the back of his yard and he has a bunch of these small dwarf nanwas. If you're going to get a ma uh, banana tree, this is the one you want. Uh, look how dwarf this is. I mean, we're still here at, at, at this height and, and this is a dwarf now, these you, I, I would consider putting in. Here's the issue, and here's what I found. Uh, believe it or not, uh, these bananas are growing so low because he has them on irrigation. Uh, my bananas were not on irrigation. So I could be wrong, but what I'm finding out is if your bananas are not on irrigation, uh, they're going to grow taller and not give as much fruit. And if they are on irrigation, they're going to give more fruit sooner and possibly shorter, especially if they're a dwarf variety. So uh, he's doing good with these. These are not tall at all. Uh, and so that he doesn't have to worry about them falling down on top of another tree when he takes out a stalk. Uh, so we got that. There's another one. So, and there's, wow, there's another. There's another one, another uh, stalk right there. So he's got this little corner here with these bananas and so on. If he keeps an eye on it, he's going to be j doing just fine. Uh, so again, I'm not against bananas and I'm not against growing bananas. My thing is, if you have a really small space and you're trying to fit as many trees as possible, sticking bananas in, you got to find a perfect spot if you're going to keep them. Like in my yard, I put left some in the corners. You got to find a good spot. Don't just try to stick them between the trees because they could potentially overtake the yard and overtake your trees. But in general, if you do it the right way, they're wonderful. Uh, so that's what he's got growing on here, and uh, that's it. So, and again, so he has a fence right back there. If he had vines going on that fence, they could easily overtake his trees. So you really got to micromanage bananas and and vines, in my opinion. Well, here I am still in his yard, and I was rethinking this. These bananas are nice and small and good, but here's here's my issue with them. This is a mango tree, a beautiful-looking mango tree. It's a baby mango tree. When this mango trees grow back, there's no way he's going to be able to keep this mango tree and those bananas, and one of them are going to have to go. Now, in the meantime, if he wants to deal with them, that's fine. But eventually, both of these two things won't coexist too well. Those trees are, are, are tall and long and going to shade out this mango tree, or this mango tree will get bigger and shade out those. So... Uh, so that, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you have to really have a lot of space to let the uh, banana trees grow uh, 
the way that, that they want or get rid of your uh, let have less trees so same thing here he has a a mango tree over here right now it's not too bad even though some of the panicles could uh, sun out this mango tree but eventually if he doesn't cut that and they keep growing it's going to overtake this so i'm learning it's a lot less work uh and not I, I don't justify a rack of bananas once a year or twice a year to, to the extra work, but everybody got to figure it out. So here's an example. Uh, here's another mame tree in his yard, and he has some bananas growing over there. And it looks like these bananas are a little shading out. Now, this tree's doing great right now, but it's shading out, and it will definitely shade out. This my may tree until eventually this my may tree is going to grow much bigger, but the bananas will shade out. We'll shade this out. Just another example. So, all right, everybody, uh, that is this video about bananas. Let me know your experience with this. Until then, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.